where Jesus died for me. Or you have to be a good singer to be an assistant pastor. Pretty much, I think so. It helps. <laughs> Amen. It always helps. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Brother Rick Bryan told me one time. He said, "You know, I hate you." And I know Brother Rick since he was a teenager. I said, "Why, Brother Rick?" He said, "Well, he said one thing. He said you can sing, you can preach, and you got hair." I said, Brother Rick, I love you too. <laughs> Amen. It's good to have Brother Kevin Bartless with us tonight. Come on, Brother Kevin, preach for us. Hey, thank you, preacher. Appreciate you so much. Thank Bless you, God. you, brother. Bless you, my friend. It's such a joy to be here. And I'm going to follow the instructions. They said pick the thing up and put it on. Put it on. Okay, so you put it on the new man, put off the old man. There we go. And you got the throttle back there. Somebody's got the throttle. I won't get too loud, right? Okay. Hallelujah. Wonderful. It's a joy to be here Amen. on top of the mountain and uh, with my friend, Brother John Davis. Thank you, brother, for the privilege and the honor of this opportunity. I appreciate your faithfulness so much. It's a, it's a testament to God's grace uh, that there is an amazing printing facility right here in the little wide spot in the road called Looneyville, West Virginia. Amen. And that millions of scripture portions are produced uh, right here in this little place and they go around the world and it's just a, it's an amazing thing and it's a testament to the fact that if you'll just be willing God will use you to do great and mighty things and Brother Davis your willingness just to be used of God has been an inspiration to me and an example to folks here in West Virginia for these many many years I appreciate you so much how you just stay at it you just stay at it and God always honors faithfulness yeah. And Brother John, you've been faithful, and I appreciate you as my friend. I appreciate you as a co-laborer in the ministry here in West Virginia. I love West Virginia. Amen. I mean, I just love West Virginia. And uh, I'm thankful 
for the good men of God, the good churches, and the ministries that are situated right here. And this is a special place and a special one. I'd like you to take your copy of the Word of God, if you would, and turn to the, the fifth chapter of Mark. I'll ask you to turn a couple more times this evening, staying in the Gospel of Mark. And I want to talk about friendships. I want to talk about people who are close to you. You know, relationships are often measured in terms of closeness. You know, sometimes you have friends that you don't get to see very often. It's been a long time since I saw Brother Tom Berg. It's good to see you, brother. And glad our paths have crossed again uh, here up on the mountain and as they crossed out the camp meeting before. And I'm thankful to see you and others. But there are some folks that we have relationships with uh, that are distant and we see them from time to time and we kind of track each other that's easier to do now on social media you know you can just follow along what people are doing uh, and sometimes that's good a lot of times that's maybe not so good I get it but uh, yeah but there are some people to whom you're very close very close and there's a term that's often used about those folks that are closest to us and the term would be well that's kind of my inner circle you know the phrase the inner circle people that are the closest to you maybe like your own family someone that's close to you like a brother I have a I have a friend like that some of you all know my buddy Byron Fox brother Byron's like a brother to me in fact since my brother went to heaven about 16 years ago brother Fox has been kind of my brother and uh, we, we sp speak often and text often and just keep track of each other and encourage each other and help each other. If I've got a big project going, I guarantee you Brother Fox is involved. And if he's got a big project going, he's going to call on me and try to get me to help. And, and I want to do that because he's in my inner circle. Amen. You with me on this inner circle thing? Closeness. I want to talk about and let us see in Scripture Jesus' inner circle. He called 12 disciples to follow him in a very close way and they there were many disciples but there were those 12 that he would name as apostles later on but he out of these 12 he had three that were really his inner circle and you've heard preachers refer to that Peter and James and John and three different times that we know of from the scripture record Jesus pulled Peter, James, and John apart from the other disciples. And he pulled them apart from all the masses that might be following. He pulled them apart from those that were just following along to try to catch a glimpse of something. He pulled these three aside three different times that we know of. And they experienced, in the gospel record, three amazing events that intensified the relationship that the Son of God had with them. Their unique closeness to Jesus opened the door to an even deeper understanding of holy God. Amen. Jesus' inner circle and the, the beautiful blessings and the benefits of staying close to Jesus. Amen. Just staying real, real close to Jesus. Look in Mark uh, chapter 5 and here we have the raising of Jairus' daughter. We can also read the record in Luke chapter 8, but we'll, we'll do it here in Mark chapter 5. Look at, look at verse uh, 21. And when Jesus passed over again by ship to the other, other side, much people gathered unto him, and, and he was nigh to the sea. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet and besought him greatly, saying, My Little daughter, lieth at the point of death. Pray, I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she may, and that she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And certain women which had an issue of blood. You know, here we see Jesus interrupted. This is another. This is another message here. The touch of faith from this woman. So we, we, won't, we won't work with that tonight. We're going to skip on down to, he, he heals this lady. And uh, while he yet spake, look at verse 35. Now he's, he's dealt with this lady who had a very special need, very, very personal need. But look at verse 35. While he yet spake, there came the ruler from the synagogue house a certain which said, 
thy daughter is dead, why troublest thou the master any further? Uh-oh. From the human perspective, we miss the timing. We miss the opportunity. It's, it's over. It's, it's, there's no need, to, no, need to, no need to bother Jesus with this now. Verse 36, Jesus is always on the case. Right? Nothing, nothing gets by Jesus. Amen. And as soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be, be not afraid, only believe. There's, there's a powerful message right there. Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter, James, and John. Here comes the inner circle. Some of the other disciples are there. We just read that there was throngs there. But Jesus pulled these three he pulled these three apart. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue. And he seeth the tumult. There's a lot of confusion going on. A tragedy has beset this family, and no doubt beset this community. A child is dead. And them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto him, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. That's often the response of the world to the words of Jesus. Amen. They laughed him to scorn. They're laughing, they're laughing Jesus to scorn now Amen. that he's the son of God. Amen. They laughed him to scorn that he said, well, on this rock I'll build my church. They laughed him to scorn when he said, I, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. They laughed him to scorn. But the laughter doesn't change the truth, does it? Amen. Right. Verse 40, but when he, had, when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother and of the damsel, and then that were with him. Who were them that were with him? Peter, James, John. He is what? He is inner circle. And entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and saith unto her, Talitha, cum, which is, cum, cum I, which is being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And he who they had laughed to scorn spoke to this little child who was dead. And verse 42 says, and straightway the damsel arose and walked. For she was of the age of 12 years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. Get it now. Peter, James, and John were positioned so as to see this miracle when others were not. The inner circle is the position that enhances our perspective. In the inner circle, God's power is revealed. The other disciples didn't get to see the apex of God's power in this situation. Certainly those who were the throngs that were following Jesus didn't get to see all the, all the amazing power of God in raising this dead little girl back to life. They didn't see it. Those who were laughing him to scorn, the weepers and the wailers, who, when he said, oh, she's not dead, she's just sleeping, they, he put them out. But they, didn't see, no, they didn't see it. Who saw it? The inner circle. The inner circle is where God's power is revealed. Staying close to Jesus will allow us to witness the miraculous power of God. Amen. The miraculous power of God in us and in those around us. The miraculous power of God through us. Amen. I hope you're a person. I hope you're a Christian. And for the preachers that are here in the tabernacle tonight, I hope you're a preacher who rejoices in the victories that other Christians have. Amen. I know some, I know some, pre some preachers just, they don't seem to rejoice a whole lot when the brother down the road's having a great victory. Shame on us. Shame on us. I want to be a big picture guy. I want to be a big picture for the kingdom of God. That when folks get saved at your church, hallelujah. And I hope you'll say hallelujah when folks get saved at our church. These folks stayed close to Jesus and they got to see the power of God. And we've all experienced miracles in our life. Don't question that now. Every one of us that know the Lord have seen miracles in our life. Did you talk to God today? 
So even if you're backslidden, you didn't talk to God today. The last time you talked to God, I want to tell you that's a miracle. That a sinner, a sin-stained, sin-polluted, sin-loving human being got to have fellowship with holy God. I want to tell you that's a miracle. That's only by the power of God that you've been moved from the category of the eternally condemned into the category of the eternally forgiven. Amen. It took a miracle to put the stars in place, yes. It took a miracle to hang the world in space, yes. But when he saved my soul, cleansed it, made me whole, it was a miracle of love and grace. Amen. The closer we get to Jesus... The closer we're positioned to see the hand of God at work where others only see questions, others only see confusion. But in the inner circle, you get a unique perspective because God brings us into that place. In this event, a tragedy happened. But then, a miracle happened. And the miracle revealed the power the power of God. Those who didn't want to witness the event might say, well, she's only sick. And then she got better. But Peter, James, and John, they were there. They knew. They saw. They saw a dead little girl. And then they saw a little girl walking around. Some people never get close enough to Jesus to see God working miracles all around them. The Bible says... In Daniel chapter 11 verse 32, But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Do we know God enough? Are we in His inner circle so as to see God's mighty power at work? It's, it's revealed to us when we get close to Jesus. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 said, For God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Ephesians 6, 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. In Jesus' inner circle, in the inner circle, that's where God's, God's power is revealed. Now turn to Mark chapter 9. Turn over a few pages to Mark chapter 9, if you would, please. And we'll see another example of the inner circle. And in Mark chapter 9, the first few verses... We'll see that it's in the inner circle where God's glory is revealed. It's in the inner circle where God's glory is revealed. And he said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that there be some of them that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And after six days Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John. Here they are again. There's the inner circle. And leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his raiment became shining exceeding white as snow. So as no fuller on earth can white them. And there appeared unto them Elias with Moses. And they were talking with Jesus. And Peter answered and said, Jesus said to Jesus, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. For he wit not what to say, for they were sore afraid. In verse 7, there was a cloud that overshadowed them. And a voice that came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. The inner circle got to see this amazing demonstration. You see, in this transfiguration, we see that staying close to Jesus will cause us to see through eyes of the deeper faith of being in the inner circle, the glorious, holy presence of God in our lives. Amen. Now, I will tell you, not every Christian experiences these, these things because it's in the inner circle. There are things available to Christians that some folks just never take advantage of. I want to take advantage, hallelujah, of all the blessings that God offers, don't you? My wife and I were, have been spending the last couple of days at a vacation spot that we like to go to. And where we were, where we were you can get a, a breakfast buffet in the morning. Yeah, mm is right. 
mm, is right. I mean, God's all over that. And I want to tell you, at a, place, at a place where there's a breakfast buffet and they've got all this stuff laid out there, I try some of almost everything. Especially if it's something I'm not even sure what it is. I re I'm really curious about that. I mean, I try a lot of stuff. I want to take full advantage of the fact that somebody's not only giving me biscuits and gravy and bacon and sausage, but they've got some kind of, they've taken some eggs and they put some, they put some uh, basil and tomato and some mozzarella cheese in it. Never had that before until this morning. I want to tell you, hallelujah, for bruschetta scrambled eggs. It's going to be part of my repertoire at my house. Bruschetta scrambled eggs. Because I want to try something new. I want, I want to take advantage of everything that was laid out there. Amen. I filled three plates full of little portions of a whole bunch of stuff and ate it all. Didn't want to miss a thing. I don't want to miss anything God has for me. Amen. That's the, that's the heartbreak of a pastor to know that there are people sitting in the pews and God has a buffet for them and all they want is a drive through from McDonald's. Amen. Listen, get in the inner circle where the plethora of God's blessings, opportunities, and glorious experiences are laid out for you in the inner circle. In this event, Peter, James, and John are allowed by the Lord to catch a glimpse of His heavenly glory. The very nature of God in Christ Jesus. What was inside of Him, He let it just leak out a little bit. And I believe God had His hand on the throttle there. Because if he let it all go, they'd, just, they'd have just burned up and at least lost their eyesight. The hand was on the throttle, but they got to see a glimpse, a muted view of the glory of God that is Christ Jesus. Now the other disciples didn't get to see it. They were followers. They were loyal. They saw many amazing things. The other nine, they saw many amazing things, but only the inner circle. Got to see that little girl raised. Only the inner circle got to see the glory of God eke out from him. How on the mountain God let that glory just shine through. And they witnessed a vision of his glory. It says his face did shine as the sun and his raiment as white as light. They got to see it. And they also saw the visitors from glory. Moses and Elias. They were engulfed by the vapor from glory. Amen. That bright cloud that overshadowed them. They heard the voice from glory. Beloved, this is my beloved son. Hear ye him. Amen. And John, the apostle John summarized it this way in the chapter our brother was dealing with just a few moments ago. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. He said, I was there. I saw the glory. We beheld it. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. He said, I saw it with my eyes. The glory of God. The glory of Jesus Christ reminds us we are not following a man. We are not following a godly teacher. We are not following a miracle worker. We are following Jesus who is God. Amen. Everything God is, Jesus is, because Jesus is God. And our close relationship through Jesus is with Almighty God Himself. And because of that, we can get in the inner circle. And He'll bless us and privilege us to go beyond where other disciples could have gone. Go beyond that to see His glory revealed. The glory revealed as of the only begotten of the Father. Listen to, listen to the ninth chapter of Romans, verse 22. What if God, willing to show His wrath and to make His power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that He might make known, He might make known the riches of His glory on the vessels of mercy. Happy, I'm happy to be a vessel of mercy. And God wants to make His glory known. God's not hiding, He's revealing Himself. Make known the riches of His glory on the vessels of mercy which He had afore prepared unto glory. God wants us to see His glory. God wants us to be transfixed on His majesty. Some people, though, never get close enough to Jesus. 
to experience the awesome glory of God in their own lives. 1 Peter 5.10, But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, complete, establish, strengthen, and settle you. God wants to reveal His glory through us. We can take it in, we can see it, and then He wants it to reflect off of us to a lost and dying world. The glory of God in our lives is, is the external glowing of the new person that God makes us to be. Ephesians 4, 24, And ye have put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Righteousness and holiness are on the inside, but they are revealed on the outside by the glory of God on us. God's desire for us is that we are to be shining examples of His love, His mercy, and His grace. Our lives are to point others to Jesus Christ. This is what the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 12. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you Amen. and ye in him according to the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. In the inner circle, God's glory is revealed. And then lastly, turn, turn to Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Near the end of near the end of Mark's gospel record given of course directly by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Mark 14 and verse 32. And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, Sit ye here while I shall pray. And he taketh with him, here they are again, Peter, and James, and John. And began to be amazed, and to be very heavy. And he saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And they went forward a little, and fell on the ground, and prayed that if it were possible, and he went forward, prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what thou wilt. Here we find in the inner circle, God's love is revealed. Jesus is praying here a, a prayer of agony as there is only divine dread that is coming upon the Lord Jesus. A dread that we could never comprehend in our human self. The dread of holiness taking on sinfulness. Analogies don't work. Given that, may I make an attempt? Can you imagine a bath of acid, hundreds of gallons of acid? being poured directly upon you and you knew it was coming dread dread acid agony corrosion destruction holy God is about to take the sin of the world upon himself Amen. he who knew no sin became sin for us that Amen. we might be made the righteousness of God in him and in the inner circle Get the picture, the inner circle. They're just, he's pulled them out. And he goes just a little bit farther. I believe they're in earshot of the whole thing. I believe they can hear him. And he hears him pouring out his heart. The precious humanity of Jesus is on display. As he agonizes over the impending crucifixion and the taking on of sin upon himself. It's the highest demonstration of love ever known. Amen. In fact, John would say, greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. John would record that Jesus saying that. And so now they're hearing Jesus. They're seeing what he's, they're understanding what he's about to do. Now the other disciples didn't see it. The other disciples didn't get to hear it. They were followers. They were loyal. They saw many amazing things, but only the inner circle saw this. Jeremiah 31.3 The 
The prophet testifies, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, He quotes the Lord, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. The inner circle got to hear and see Jesus demonstrating a love that no human can possibly understand. Some people never get close enough to Jesus through their prayer life to experience that closer than a brother intimacy that God talks about in His Word. You remember that we learned a new word in the American culture 17, 18 years ago. When the towers fell, the planes flew into the Pentagon, the planes flew into the towers, the plane flew into a field in Pennsylvania. We learned a new word, first responder. I'm sure it was out there among that community, but now everybody in the country knows what that word is, what that word means, first responder. Hallelujah for first responders. If you're one of those, whether as your employment or as a part of a volunteer squad, thank you for your service. You add to the quality of our nation and the quality of our community. But I want you to think about that first responder. Coming in just at the time of an emergency. Now let me ask you a question. Would it be more accurate in your life to put Jesus in the category of first responder? Or are you, are you in his inner circle? You see, there's a difference. Hallelujah for the first responder. But I want to have a better, stronger, deeper, more intimate, passionate relationship with the Lord Jesus Amen. than just the one who saved me from hell. And he did. Hallelujah. But he walks and talks with me each and every day that I let him Amen. from his word. And we become close friends. It's close friends. So much so that he'll let me, if I'm willing to come meet him on his terms, he'll let me just come right on into his inner circle. Amen. Where his power is revealed. Where his glory is revealed. Where his love is revealed. In a way that those outside the inner circle can't really understand or appreciate. Is Jesus your first responder? Or is he really, truly your inner circle friend? In Psalm 91, verse 14, the Bible says, But because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him and will set him on high, because he hath known my name. Amen. It's in the inner circle where these things are revealed. God's love is revealed. The Bible talks about in Ephesians 2, verse 4 and 5, But God, who is rich in mercy... For his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together, made us alive, quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. I want to tell you, friend, the Lord loves you. Amen. He loves you this evening. And he wants to save you if you're not saved. Christian, those who would testify with honesty, with honesty, yes, I know the Lord is my Savior. I know that my Redeemer liveth. Amen. I can take you to the place. I can tell you the time. I can, I can give assurance that my sins have been forgiven and by the grace and mercy of God. So let me ask you, Christian, what's the closeness level of your relationship with Jesus? I certainly hope He's more than just a first responder. I hope He's more than just someone you're fond of. I hope he's much more of someone that you have a great appreciation and respect for. Are you in Jesus' inner circle? And more to the point, have you let Jesus into your inner circle? Have you brought Jesus into your inner circle? Are you experiencing the full measure, the full measure of God's power his glory and His love that's available to you in the inner circle. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. We'll have a word of prayer, turn the service back over to, to our brother. 
Huffman and just God will direct. But let me just say to wrap up the message time none of us are here by accident. God's brought you here and God has, has had something for you. Have you received what God has for you? It may be part of this message. It may be from a song. It may be from the other message. It may be just something the Holy Spirit brought into your life and heart today and you just brought it with you to the meeting. But I want to tell you, you're not here just on a whim. You're here on divine appointment. And do whatever God would be pleased for you to do at the conclusion of this service. Whatever it may be. Camp meeting time, the words often just flow off the lips. Well, just mind the Lord, mind the Lord. So much it can become a catchphrase. Just back up a moment. Lord, what do you want me to do? Just take Paul's simple words from Acts chapter 9, verse 6. Lord, what will thou have me to do? Because you never make a mistake following the will of God. Never make a mistake following the will of God. Our Heavenly Father, we pray and thank you for the opportunity of this evening, for the friendships, Lord, that are represented under this tabernacle. And Lord, for the moment, this divine moment, in this service, Lord, I pray that you would do what only you can do, and that is to meet spiritual needs. And so, Lord, I pray that each one tonight would do in response to the leading of the Holy Spirit, in response to the preaching, in response to the music, in response to you, God, what you would be pleased for each one of us to do. And we'll thank you and praise you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Page 
where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Amen. Isn't that good? I tell you what, I don't know about you, but I want to be in the inner circle, don't you? Most of all, I want Him in my inner circle. Where would I be without Jesus? Hopelessly lost and headed for a devil's hell. But because of Him, I'm His child and headed for heaven. I want to be close. I like closeness. I like closeness in relationships. Amen. You know, we live in a society that everybody wants to hold you at an arm's length. Amen. I don't want it like that. I like a close relationship. And I surely don't want to hold the Lord at an arm's length away. But I want Him involved in every part of my life. I like that. Brother Kevin, that was a blessing. Praise God. In the first message you preached tonight, both of them, I don't know about you, but I've got something out of every message that's been preached on the mountain so far. I mean, we might be able to start revival by the end of the week. Amen. You know, I believe Dr. Hudson used to say just one person got inside of a circle and say, God, start revival right here. Amen. Amen. We're always worrying about reviving somebody else. How about getting concerned about ourselves and get on fire for God and get in the inner circle where we can feel the blessings flow in our life and just be what God wants us to be. Folks, we don't have long left. I mean, I look through this crowd tonight and I see a few young people over here. Amen. But the rest of you, like me, you're getting old. Amen? We don't have a long time left by nature. And if there's ever time that we as a fundamental Baptist ought to be on fire spreading the gospel to a lost and dying world, it's right now. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not after a while. I had a guy tell me one time he was a preacher, a good preacher. He's going to go into full-time ministry when he retired. God didn't call me to wait till I retire to preach His Word. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I remember Brother Kevin when I started preaching and started pastoring full time and working full time and raising a family full time. A guy told me, he said, it'll never work. You'll neglect your family. I said, no, I'm not neglecting my family. Neglect my family. But I'll get them involved in my ministry. Amen. And they've always been involved in my ministry. Praise God for that. I like that. Praise the Lord. i got a close relationship with my wife, my girls, my grandchildren. But I still want that close relationship with my Savior. I like as the songwriter said, Lord, just draw me a little closer all the time. I want His blessings in my life. Praise the Lord for the service tonight. Glad you, that you had a desire to be here. Come back tomorrow night. There'll be two young men preaching tomorrow night. Me and Brother Tom Berg. <laughs> Amen. When compared to eternity, we're young. <laughs> But we'll be preaching tomorrow night. Our choir will be here singing in tomorrow night's service. Amen. Anything else, Brother John? Amen. Amen. It sounds good to me. Praise the Lord. That'll, that'll, get, that'll give me a little more wind, John. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be in. Brother Bill Bartlett, would you dismiss us? Lord, I want to thank you tonight that uh, because of what happened to me when I was 15 years of age, I got to be here in Georgia and preaching the same. Thank you, Lord, you saved my soul.